Hello, and welcome to another episode in the Georgia Workers' Compensation video series. My name is Jason Perkins. I'm an attorney who specializes in handling Georgia workers' compensation cases. I created this series of videos to provide people who've been hurt at work in Georgia with helpful information about Georgia's workers' compensation laws and the benefits they should receive under those laws. Now, let's jump straight into today's topic. Today, I'd like to talk to you about workers' compensation fusion surgeries. Serious injuries at work often require surgery as part of a full healing process. Now, one common type of surgery after a serious workers' compensation injury is a fusion surgery. There are many different types of fusion surgeries, but these surgeries generally involve fusing one bone in your body to another bone in your body. Um, this surgery can be quite extensive and the recovery from it could take quite a while. Um, it may also require extensive medical treatment leading up to and even following the surgery and may keep you out of work for quite a while while you recover from them. Um, because of that, it's important to understand how a fusion surgery in your workers' compensation case can affect you and to be aware of the different issues that can arise following that fusion surgery. I'm going to discuss some of those in today's video. The first thing that you may have a question about is whether workers' compensation has to pay for the fusion surgery that's recommended by your workers' compensation doctor. Yes, they probably are going to have to pay for that. Under Georgia's workers' compensation law, insurance companies have to pay for medical treatment with authorized doctors that's reasonable and necessary and related to your injury. Um, if your workers' compensation doctor is recommending a fusion surgery to treat you for your workers' compensation injury, it's probably going to meet those requirements. There are some instances where it might not, but most of the time it probably will. Now, despite that, the workers' compensation insurance company may fight about paying for that fusion surgery that your workers' compensation doctor has recommended. Why would they do this? Well, insurance companies are businesses. Generally, they're in business to make money. Your workers' compensation case is costing them money. So they want to pay out as little as they possibly can on your workers' compensation case or any other workers' compensation case. Because of that, and since fusion surgeries are expensive, they may choose to fight about a fusion surgery even if they don't know that they're going to win that fight. Now, the fact that the workers' compensation insurance company chooses to fight about your fusion surgery doesn't mean they're going to necessarily win that fight. A workers' compensation attorney can be helpful in making sure that the insurance company pays for a fusion surgery when they fight about it. A second question you may have is whether the workers' compensation insurance company is going to have to pay you benefits if you're out of work because you have that fusion surgery. Generally, they are going to have to pay wage loss benefits in that situation. Under Georgia's workers' compensation law, insurance companies have to pay you wage loss benefits when you're out of work because of your workers' compensation injury. These benefits are not your full loss wages. They're a percentage of them. Generally, it's two-thirds of what you averaged in the three months before you were injured, and they pay these benefits to you on a weekly basis. Now, there are some situations where they might not have to pay you wage loss benefits after a fusion surgery, even if it's the fusion surgery that keeps you out of work. These situations could arise because of time limits and also because of statutes of limitations under Georgia's workers' compensation law. There are some time limits that come from when you were injured. So if it's been too long since your injury occurred, the insurance company may no longer be responsible for paying wage loss benefits. There's also statutes of limitations that could apply if there's been a certain time gap in when you receive wage loss benefits or if you didn't file a claim on time. Now, if the insurance company is claiming that they don't owe you wage loss benefits following a workers' compensation fusion surgery, it's very important to check with a workers' compensation attorney to make sure that they are telling you correctly and that you don't fit some exception to the situation that they're talking about. Now, a third question that many people have is whether they have to have the workers' compensation fusion surgery 
that their doctors recommended. No, you don't have to have that surgery if you don't want to do so. Under Georgia's workers' compensation law, the decision about whether you have a surgery, whether it's a fusion surgery or any other type of surgery, is ultimately up to you. Your workers' compensation doctor and the insurance company can't force you to have surgery. Now, it is important to know that there is a part of Georgia's workers' compensation law that allows an insurance company to attempt to stop your workers' compensation benefits if you refuse to have medical treatment without a good reason. However, it would be very unusual to see a workers' compensation judge conclude that your refusal to have a surgery without it was without a good reason, especially if the reason you were refusing to have surgery is that you were concerned about the risk associated with it. All surgeries have risk, so I would expect that a workers' compensation judge would conclude that your refusal to have surgery because of the risk is a good reason. But ultimately, that's up to a judge. So it is important to be aware that there is this part of the law that could affect your right to receive workers' compensation benefits if you do not move forward with a surgery or other medical treatment or testing that your workers' compensation doctors recommended. A fourth thing that many people have questions about is what happens if you're unable to return to your regular duty job after having surgery. A fusion surgery is a major surgery. I've represented many people who've had them in workers' compensation cases. Most people who have a fusion surgery end up having some sort of limitations on what they can do afterward. It involves fusing one bone to another. So it's not unusual that even someone who has a good recovery has some sort of limitations on what they can do because of the surgery and the injury that they've had. Now, those limitations might affect your ability to return to your regular duty job. So some people can't return to the type of work that they used to do even after a successful recovery from a fusion surgery. And not all people have good recoveries from a fusion surgery. If you do not have a good recovery, you're probably going to even have more limitations than the person who has the good recovery. Um, so there are situations where people cannot return to the regular duty job after fusion surgeries. In these situations, in Georgia's workers' compensation cases, Often, the insurance company is going to have to continue paying you wage loss benefits if you can't return to work because of your workers' compensation injury. It's a general part of Georgia's workers' compensation law that the insurance company would have to continue your wage loss benefits if you're unable to return to work. Now, it is important to remember that there are limits on how long you can receive those wage loss benefits. And there are a few things that you need to be aware of here if you can't return to your regular duty job after a fusion surgery. The workers' compensation insurance company is going to be trying to stop your benefits. Because of that, they're going to try to get the doctor to say that you can return to work because you are 100% better, even if you're not really 100% better. Because if they get this full duty release without restrictions from the doctor, they can likely stop your workers' compensation wage loss benefits. Even if they can't get that, they're going to try to get the workers' compensation doctor to say you're better to the point that you can go back and do some other type of work and try to stop your benefits on that basis. Now, even if they're unsuccessful in doing this, you need to remember that there are those limits on how long you can receive wage loss benefits. So depending on how long it's been since your injury, you may have to worry about your wage loss benefits stopping sometime soon. A third thing to think about is that other employment benefits through your job can be affected as well. Many people have other benefits such as health insurance, short or long-term disability, or some sort of retirement benefits that they may qualify for through their job. If you're unable to return to work after a workers' compensation fusion surgery, it's possible that your employer may at some point lay you off or may place you on some sort of leave of absence. And in some instances, being laid off or being placed on certain types of leave of absences may affect your right to continue receiving these employment benefits, such as health insurance or short or long-term disability. So it's important to think about how those benefits may be affected if you're unable to return to work. 
Because workers' compensation fusion surgeries often result in some sort of permanent limitations, it may affect your ability to work. And because Georgia workers' compensation has these tricky rules about how your benefits can be affected, I recommend that anybody who's considering or has had a workers' compensation fusion surgery reach out to a Georgia workers' compensation attorney to get a free consultation. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you have, please consider two things before you go. First, I'd really appreciate if you give this video a like or a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel if you'd like to be notified of future videos in the Georgia Workers' Compensation video series. Second, if you've got workers' compensation questions, please reach out to get answers. I offer free consultations in Georgia workers' compensation cases. If you'd like to set one of those up, there's two easy ways you can do so. The first is by calling the phone number at the bottom of the screen, and the other is by reaching out to a store website, which is www.perkinslawtalk.com. Just click on and submit the free consultation request form there, and a member of our team will reach out to you and get a consultation scheduled. I'd like to thank you again for watching this video today. I'd like to wish you the best of luck as you recover from your injuries.